Hey, it's Mike, and uh, welcome back to another Dev Snapshot update from Godot. Uh, this was posted on May the 1st. It's the Dev Snapshot for 4.3, Dev 6. And this snapshot is going to be the last Dev Snapshot before entering the beta phase, indicating that 4.3 is now feature complete. So you can read the full article here on their blog. I'll leave a, a link to it below. Um, this snapshot has 650 commits and various improvements and bug fixes. And we're just going to go over the highlights right now. Uh, you can see all of the updates on the interactive change log as well. And I will leave a link to that below as well. And they have a link to it in the blog post right here. Uh, so these are changes made since the previous dev snapshot 4.3. So if there are three, 650 commits. That's how many commits there have been since dev, between Dev 5 and Dev 6. So let's just look at the highlights here. Uh, they've implemented fixed time step physics interpolation for 2D games. This is to address position and camera jitter. Um, and it was It's a feature that they're bringing forward from Godot 3.6. Uh, so uh, if you don't know what it is, fixed time step refers to a technique used in game development to ensure a consistent and predictable physics behavior regardless of the device's performance or frame rate. So that means that it, the physics engine now uses a fixed interval of time for calculations, which leads to smoother and more accurate physics simulations across different devices and frame rates. So now it'll be like device independent. Uh, you know, for your 2D games, the uh, physics interpolation. So it should be smoother than uh, the camera jitter and the position uh, issues is what it's uh, meant to fix. Um, the tile map layers are now exposed as individual tile map layer nodes uh, for a simpler API and reduced clutter. So the you can read more about that in this uh, GH post here, the uh, exposed tile map layer uh, pull request. So it tells you what it actually does and it gives you like a little video of what it does actually. So it shows you that it exposes the tile map layer as individual nodes, adds two buttons to select previous and next layer, adds a select all layers button works with tile map layers only, adds an advanced menu option to extract the layers from a tile map and to add them as children of that tile map node. And we're removing the tile map layer group node as it is mostly useless with these changes above. So you want to take a look at it. And then there's the video that gives a demo of those features. So you can have a look at this video. Uh, the next highlight is that uh, packed byte arrays are now saved with base64 encoding. This will reduce file sizes and noisy diffs, which it will, it will improve um, like, you know differences like difference checking in terms of what has changed. Uh, so they changed it to use base64 encoding, which is more compact uh, instead of yeah, yeah, instead of what it was using. Uh, and that's the scene resource format, so the TSCN T-Res format. So we should have smaller scene files, I guess, with this particular change. Uh, they're, they also said they're backporting support for parsing the new format to the upcoming 4.2, 4.3, and 4.1.5 releases so that it will still be possible for users to roll back to these versions if they need to, the older versions, uh, the older format. And they also changed the name of the editor settings config file to make it specific to each Godot minor version. So that you can have a different config file for each minor version, I guess. And there is now automatic checking for engine updates in the project manager. So you can now, it'll automatically check for updates. So it'll let you know if there's an update. Uh, it's not enabled by default, but you have to toggle it by enabling the online network mode in the project manager's settings. There is a new, uh, they're implementing the reverse 
Z for the depth buffer technique. Um, there was another blog article about this. Um, so this is something that wasn't done in time for 4.0, but it's it is being released now so so they say most shaders should be unaffected but there are some specific scenarios that you're gonna you're gonna need to tweak so if you take a look at this they have another blog post that was done not too long ago where it says i'm sorry for breaking your shader so this article here points to an article from nvidia which you should read and, and to explain what the reverse z um, is the reverse the uh, depth buffer technique uh, it it does reduce the chances of running into z fighting which is when things are on top of each other and it doesn't know which one to display first so you get the flickering you sometimes get flickering on the with z fighting uh, which you may have seen in other game engines as well like unity um, where you'd have to like move one of your objects up a little bit so that it, it would not do that but so there you there for shaders they are now implementing this reverse z depth buffer technique to try and get rid of those issues but it breaks compatibility for some shaders so this article will go over what you need to do in terms of fixing your shader if you use anything that writes to position in the vertex processor function or writes to depth in the fragment processor function if it reads from depth texture or if it operates in clip space. So in these situations, you're going to need to make small updates to the shaders. So, And they give you the, the uh, solutions as well in this article. So take a look at that. And then we have various other improvements. Uh, and you can and the some some of the improvements are uh, in the animation they've implemented a base class skeleton modifier 3d for nodes that modify skeleton 3d which can be beneficial for character animations and rigging um, so as refactoring for nodes it may modify skeleton 3d in the audio section, they've ad added the audio effect hard limiter as a rework of the audio, audio limiter effect, improving audio quality and control in games. So if you want to look at that, these pull requests have more information on them. They tell you how it works. It tells you what a limiter is and what it does, but it basically avoids distorting outputs, output and sound when it crosses zero decibels and it protects the hearing of users against unexpected loud signals so it sort of smooths out your audio so that there's no like sudden loud noises in it um, so that they've got details on the actual implementation of this and and the there's a another blog post they they're pointing to to take a look at how those work in c plus plus so take a look at those in the core um, area, we've got uh, addition of typed array support for binary serialization, which enhances data handling and storage capabilities. We've got refactoring of OS exit code to be exit success by default. This will improve the application exit behavior. So if we want to look at that. Um, so yeah, they defaulted to a success code. So if any error condition that causes interruption of the process failed to set the error code properly it would go unnoticed in systems that rely on error codes so if you were like automating your builds and it, it you may it may have failed the build but then it doesn't it didn't get picked up because it would wrongly report a failure code on exit even though it's not failing so this was most prominent with the linux headless build but now Godot can run headless on any platform. So since the fix was Linux specific, it doesn't work when doing command line import and exports on Windows or Mac OS. But there's two pull requests that aim to work this around. They're again only workarounds. And so they've gone back to the drawing board and fixed the exit code propagation. Um, next we have in C Sharp, we have fixes and serialization of delegates, capturing variables and handling of solution files during exporting. So when the solution file is mix it, missing during exporting, it'll throw an exception. Okay, next, in the editor section, I'm just giving you some highlights from here. You can come and read all of these and look at the pull requests that uh, um, 
that is next to it. But uh, the editor now allows docs to be closed and opened, uh, providing more flexibility and customization in the editor. So you'll be able to customize your layout better, I think, in the dock. And they have these dock positions. You can make them floating or close them. So you're going to have more options when setting up your workspace. In the GUI section, we have implementation of graph frame and text tool tip for tab bar and tab container, which improves the visual scripting and user interface clarity. In the import section, we have the tweaks in environment settings, in addition of secondary light and 3D advanced import settings, which enhances the import capabilities of, of Godot. So it, secondary lights were in your input file, now you can get them to import. Now in navigation, we have improvements in the 2D navigation mesh baking, A star pathfinding, and navigation path simplification, enhancing AI and navigation in games. So the A star algorithm has a partial path return option now. And there's navigation path simplification and navigation mesh source geometry parsers and callbacks. Next we have Fixes to particles for CPU, GPU, Particle 2B, debugs on certain devices, improving the particle system performance. Uh, so it's the Adreno 3XX devices is the compatible, in the compatibility rendering settings. So uh, there's some fixes to that. For physics, we have addition of height map shape 3D update with image data. And if we look at the details, it adds update map data from image as a new function to height map shape 3D. And it tells you what the function does and how to use it. So you can take a look at this if you need the if you need this new one. It's for populating height values in a height map collision from an image file. So and they've done have a fix for move and slide wall acceleration in 3D. So wall slide acceleration. So when travel is high enough, keep the global position resulting from move and collide and set the motion to the remainder from the move and collide call. This ensures travel is taken into account once instead of twice. So that's the that's the fix for that. So in the rendering area, we have some various enhancements, including baking meshes from uh, blend shape mix, reflection probe support and shadow fade optimizations and adjustments in the compatibility renderer for improved visuals and performance. So there's quite a few rendering fixes here. Uh, so they're adding reflection probe support to the compatibility renderer, which is good. And it'll, you'll be able to get better graphics out of it. And adjustments and color correction as well. So, okay. And then in the shaders, there's one shaders fix to implement documentation comments and tool tips for shader uniform in the inspector. So it allows you, it makes it better in terms of uh, documentation and stuff. So the change log, the interactive change log is here. So if you want to take a look at this, you can get the full list of 650 changes, which is too many to go, go, go over in this um, particular video. But if you want to take a look at it, you can look and see what else they have in here that looks interesting. Um, let me look at the Mac OS fixes. So in Mac OS fixes, we have 10 fixes. Uh, we're fixing CI with new GitHub runners. We, there's a build for both ARM64 and x86-64. We're disabling the output embedding on Mac OS and moving it to the in advanced options on other platforms. And we're going to use expand to title for the project manager. Same, it was not working nice with the old project manager design, but seems to look okay with the new one. Can be controlled with the same editor setting as the main editor window. So that's an improvement to the project manager, I guess. The, uh, uh, for Mac OS export, we have detect embedded helper executables using Mac O header. And we have the fix for the exit success issue on Mac OS and on Android as well. Uh, Mac OS, we have fix non-global non native menu shortcuts. There's an issue with moving the maximize window in Mac OS. This was also in, I think, in a previous update that I... It's a similar issue to that one. 
And there's a fix to the menu bar and dock stop appearing after closing a sub a sub window. And a fix to native file dialog with empty filter list. There's an issue with that. So if you come in here and just search for what your what kind of issue you want, um, and the, you can find it in here. There's some updates to third-party libraries that it uses as well. There is a host of documentation changes as well. So in every uh, update, there's a lot of documentation. They're continually improving and updating the documentation as well, which is good for people trying to learn Godot and learn what each thing does. For the asset library, there's a fix to the broken layout of the asset library page. So the broken layout issue is when you have it going more narrow than two columns. It's not stacking the second column on top of the first. So it's a little bit of a issue there with the layout. So, And the second issue occurs when scaling to the point where the third column appears. The widths of the three columns were not evenly distributed. So there's some fixes to this. These these are fairly minor, but uh, fixes nonetheless. So if you want to see the list of all the changes, come in here and take a look at them and look at their pull requests. And normally you get a explanation of what it is and what the fix is. So it's worth actually going through and reading some of these. So, uh, so that's it for this update. Um, if you want to download Dev6, you can do so. It's available for Linux, Mac, OS, and Windows. So you can come in here and click the download. Um, the featured image is of Tristram, a game by Bip and Bits. Tristram is a Ludum Dare 55 submission by Bip and Bits made with Godot 4.3 Dev 5. So it's done with the previous Dev version. And you take on the role of the mayor of Diablo 1's Tristram. Managing the city and its steady supply of heroes. So it's like a management sim based on the city It's that's in Diablo 1. So you can come here to itch.io and run it yourself uh, right, in, right on the website. So, And it was made in 72 hours for Ludum Dare 55. So it's fairly recent. And they have some GIFs as to what it looks like. It's like a pixel style game. But it's like a city management where you can upgrade your buildings and manage the heroes and stuff like that. So take a look at this. It looks pretty interesting. So that's it for the Dev Snapshot 6. This is the final Dev Snapshot. So we're looking forward to the like the release candidate, I guess, of 4.3, which will come next. Uh, so until then, uh, like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, let me know what feature you or your favorite feature is of this dev snapshot, and we'll see you in the next one.